What's going on guys and welcome back to Farmer on the Prairie. So today I'm going to be doing some work in the shop, some stuff on the farm here. And uh, right now I'm just feeding my dogs this morning. And I don't know if any of you have met her, but this is my sweet golden doodle, Ruby. She's an F1 golden doodle and she's just adorable. I've had her since around Thanksgiving. Yeah, honey. Yeah. How you doing, Duchess? Yeah? They've already been outside playing this morning for a little bit. Hi, Miss Bailey. Bailey's the queen of the roost. And Caesar's doing good like always, huh, bud? I'm gonna leave them inside for probably an hour or so now to warm up on their heated mats and then they can go back out and play again. Right, Duchess? Yes. So I have my job trailer in the shop this morning. I took some stuff apart, cleaned it out last night, all except for the trash can in the front there. But then I put down a sheet of quarter inch poly where my miter saw station slides in and out so it pulls in and out a lot easier. Not gonna be having that for too terrible long. I'm gonna switch over to a aluminum uh, miter saw stand, something like the cut hub or another variant of that. Uh, up in the front here where my saw horses go, I'm putting that poly uh, from here all the way over against the wall. Then I'm going to notch out for that little thing right there. So there's going to be poly in here, poly back there. It's just going to make it really easy to slide things in and out. Um, and then as soon as I get that wrapped up, I'm going to go ahead and put these tires. These are 18426s. I'm gonna go put those on wheels that I repainted over the weekend. You can see them right there. This is the outside face of the wheel. They look all nice and pretty now. I'm gonna go ahead and mount the tires up on those wheels and we will hopefully get them on the combine today. We are gonna have to do some modifications to the rear end of the combine to make these work. We wanna get them on to see exactly how much. So, let me get to uh, cutting piece of poly out. I now have put in a sheet of UHMW in this area, or actually no, this is H HDPE, identity polyethylene, not UHMW, but basically it fills from here to here, fits like a glove, I notched out around that strip down there, and uh, now my sawhorses can slide in here really nicely, and then they stop on this lip, and they won't slide forward and it'll just make it easier to get them in and out without you know, pushing them on bare wood that just gouges. Oh, that's nice, that is so nice. Oh, that is so much nicer. They just all slide in like that, stand up there. And now they're just really easy to move back and forth, but since there's a rail on the front, they can't come out the front. That I think will be a very, very nice upgrade that was much needed. Now I'm gonna pack up the trailer and get it outside because I need to start working on combine tires. Well, I got my trailer all packed up, so I'm gonna go ahead, go get my truck, pull that out. And then I'm going to clean up the shop a little bit and start changing tires. Alright guys, I am going to go ahead and start changing tires. So I'm going to set up a time lapse and let you guys watch.
Okay, I just mounted the last tire again. I put a uh, rubber plug in the back to, keep, like, to block off a valve stem hole, and it wasn't working, so I had to take it out and switch it out for something different. Uh, so I had to dismount this one again, but it is filling up for the last time. That one's over there. It looks a whole heck of a lot better. It's a nice, pretty looking tire instead of what we did have, and it's a lot bigger is the most important thing. So I'm gonna finish filling that one go up and eat lunch and they'll pull the combine in and get those on. Okay guys, I just realized that I completely forgot to film after lunch. Uh, got both rear tires on, as you can tell, looks much, much better than the little bitty tires that were on before. Don't worry, we were measuring the whole time and calculating to make sure that we would be able to not get the combine rocked forward too much. We're still pretty good on how much angle we have. Uh, actually, the frame's sitting about level right now, which is pretty good. Yes, we did pull the flaps off because the tires rubbed them. I knew that would be a problem. So, because basically we put four-wheel drive combine wheels on a two-wheel drive combine, so it's dished in a ways. So, we can move each of the axles out another four inches, like each side four inches, so a total of eight. But we our tie rod's not long enough, so Luke, my professional welder brother, is going to add eight inches to this tie rod, you know, cut it, sleeve it, and then uh, weld it back together, eight inches longer, so we can side it out and get it exactly how we need. We might need to lengthen our hydraulic hoses, the steering cylinder hoses when we do that, but that's not really a big deal, so we will get it. So it's all hunky-dory, but it looks a lot better with big tires, and we will make these things work. It is... Tuesday, February 22nd, 2022, the most twos Tuesday you can ever get. And uh, I am manning the farm by myself. Last Friday, uh, sister, mom and dad, and then some other people left with them, including Ben, uh, and they went down to a missions trip in Mexico. And I am stuck here taking care of the farm. So I've been doing cattle chores this morning all right well i took care of all the sisters different chickens and their pigs and then did cattle chores so now i'm going to go do some shop work because it is a not very nice day it's that time of february where all it does is it rains and it thaws and it freezes and it's just not not fun it's always sloppy so i'm gonna do some shop work and i'll take you guys along for that i'm gonna be a little bit secretive here because you can't necessarily put on the internet certain things that you do anymore because you can get in trouble for them but my truck has been having issues with regening if it, it, it a lot of you might not know this but uh diesel motors since about the 2007 or 8 time frame have had what's called emission systems on them they started out with an egr which is an exhaust gas recirculation system it takes the exhaust fumes you know very hot very harmful fumes sticks it right back into the intake of the motor. It increases the intake heat a lot, or it increases the engine heat a lot because that intake air is warm. You know, on turbocharged motors, we have intercoolers because we want to keep the ex intake temps as low as possible. Well, then we start putting exhaust fumes back into the motor. It's going to heat it up. And then starting in, when was it? 2000. Eight. This is truck wise anyways. They started putting DPFs on that is a diesel particulate filter It catches any sort of particulates aka smoke and builds up Well when that builds up The truck regens it does a regen cycle with the EGR and blows Hot air through really really hot air and it uses a lot of fuel it leaves the injectors on uh, During the exhaust strokes there's combustion in the tailpipe and it basically just burns massive amounts of fuel to clean out that filter getting you know resulting in eight nine mile a gallon stuff like that which with today's fuel prices is quite something and then in 2011 they added def diesel exhaust fluid so my truck has three emissions control systems on it and when it is regening it's using more def you burn through a lot of def you're getting terrible fuel mileage and the particulate filters plugging up you're putting hot exhaust gases back in it's just a recipe for disaster so 
I'm going to be putting, now I'm legit serious, right here I have it. I have a cold air intake and this is supposed to get more intake air and maximize efficiency of the motor and that is supposed to have less soot output and help with the regen cycle. I can tell you that my truck's really going to be helped at the regen cycle. This and a couple other parts might do that. But, you know, I'm just going to kind of leave you out of this. But this right here is a 100% legal mod to do. Um, it is still covered under your warranty if you have a warranty. It is just basically a giant air filter. A lot better than had been. Here we go. So, got a whole lot bigger intake tubes. And another intake tube. Nice coupler. I already put one of these on my dad's truck before, so I've, you know, done this once. His has the same motor mine does. And there's that. The box. This is a plug in the bottom. If you're in a very, very snowy climate and you drive in snow a lot, it keeps you from sucking snow and sometimes dirt into the filter. Clamps. Weather stripping and a sweet plastic cover. Cold air intake started with K&N filters back in the day. And K&N filters just basically put a one big tube that ran to a filter in your engine compartment. Although ironically, they were not cold air intakes. They actually increased your intake air temperature because you were sucking in the engine, engine bay heat, basically. Well, there's been several evolutions in that cycle going to today's vehicles, especially diesel trucks, and we no longer use that form of cold air intake anymore. Here's a box that still sucks through the fender and sucks uh, from behind the headlight, and it keeps all the heat from the engine bay out of it. And then, you know, these things normally have flat filters that have, you know, about a little less than a square foot of area that they suck. You can see there's all that area that it sucks through. These are also a dry filter. You do not want to run an oiled filter on the new trucks. It plugs up the uh, mass airflow sensor and then you get decreased fuel mileage and increased fuel consumption, all that good stuff. Um, but yeah, dry filters are definitely the way to go in today's day and age. So this thing is getting filter, all that stuff. Okay guys, so after a little bit here, I have it all done. You can see there's the new air filter and the reason that this is a true cold air intake is because the box is sealed off and it cannot get any engine bay heat. It still pulls through the fender. Uh, it also does pull from down below the headlight. That is a true cold air intake. You can see the larger intake tube going back to the turbo mouth piece. A little bit of what I was telling you guys earlier is you can see like right here is a uh, exhaust pipe. There circulates the exhaust gases all the way back through this valve right here and into the motor again. Hopefully this air intake will help. We'll see you here in a few days. Okay guys, so it has been a couple days. I've got it all wrapped up. My air intake and something else is completely installed. My truck should get a lot better mileage. Here we go. <coughs> well, with that being said guys, that is all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye.